So uh, today we will talk about a topic uh, which was actually originated from within Linux Foundation networking community. I will talk about a bit of history of this topic, like empowering multi-vendor in telecommunications with standardization. So I will go back around like six, seven years, 2016, 70, and that is when we start discussing these topics. And now things are finally happening. And Andrea uh, will actually talk about more technical details. But before we start, maybe we can tell who we are. Yeah. Thanks, Fatih. My name is Andrea Frittoli. Um, I work as a developer advocate and software engineer for IBM. And I represent the CDF here, and there I'm the chair of the Technical Oversight Committee and a member of the governing board as well. Thanks, Andrea. And my name is Fatih Dermanj, and I work at the Linux Foundation, leading the Continuous Data Foundation. Uh, I joined the Linux Foundation June 2020, so it's a, a one and a half years, but before uh, joining the Linux Foundation, I worked at Ericsson for 16 years. And I've been a contributor to the Linux Foundation networking projects. I started with OPNFE, Open Platform for Network Functions Virtualization, which is now called Anuket, which was like uh, after CNTT and all those things, it was relaunched as Anuket. And as I mentioned, like what we will be talking about coming 30 minutes or so, is something we talked a lot about within OPNFE and Linux Foundation networking, because we realized the changes that is happening in telecommunications industry, actually, is especially from software delivery perspective or continuous delivery perspective, that is happening everywhere, not just within the networking industry or within the telecommunications. And that actually helped us to you know, get broader collaboration around this topic, interoperability within continuous delivery. So telecom transformation and software delivery. And this is like, I'm sure you all have seen similar diagrams like this. And this is pretty similar to OPNFE diagram back in the day. Like in OPNFE, uh, we were working on uh, creating an open stack, uh, telco stack using, uh, open source telco stack using like uh, industry, you know, uh, standard hardware, not industry uh, standard software. And when we started in 2014-15, we were mainly working with OpenStack. That was the platform, underlying platform, and on top of that, we were bringing STM controllers such as Open Daylight, and we were bringing orchestrations such as OnUp and others, and trying to integrate those different technologies together. And OPNV was kind of a different project because OPNV was dealing with integration. We weren't actually developing those components ourselves, but, but we were consuming those different technologies from upstream communities. And as we continued doing that within OPNV, we realized that the integration aspects or continuous area aspects of that problem is actually mind boggling and we can't solve those problems alone. And I see Illuko and Gergely joining, they were part of those conversations as well back in OPNV days. And then that actually resulted us in reaching out to all these different communities, OpenStack, Open Daylight, ONAP, CNCF, and so on. And we said, like, we should perhaps start working on these problems together because, like, if you look at open source projects and open networking ecosystem, there are lots of projects. Some of them are pretty well established, some of them are new, with Nephew and Silvia coming up to speed. And this problem will continue to exist. And we start working on this topic 2016, 17. And that's why when I talk about, you know, the software delivery, I always go back to, you know, OPNV challenges we were facing that day. Like again, if I go back in OPNV, we were trying to bring these industry standard components together, both hardware and software. And we were having a lot of challenges. But if we don't, you know, think about where this could go, things could look simple. Like we have one vendor, for example, or one community, whatever it is developed by that vendor is consumed by the end users or telecom operators in this case. And that looks simple, how hard it can be. And that was kind of what we started our, that was what our assumption was in 2015, 16. But over time, we realized 
all this disaggregation and openness, which will actually cause a lot of difficulties for software delivery. Because the idea with openness and disaggregation is to, you know, disaggregate all the network functions, starting with virtual network functions and cloud native network functions, and that increases di vendor diversity. So you can, or operators can essentially pick and choose different network functions from different vendors. So if there is only one vendor, and if everything is physical network functions, you can perhaps directly work with that vendor and establish these pipelines between vendors environment to your environment. But as you go through this transformation and embracing openness and disaggregation, then you will start interfacing with multiple vendors. And if you look at two vendors, you are getting some VNFs and CNFs from one vendor, you are getting another set of VNFs and CNFs from another vendor. Things are still not that complicated. But if you think about like coming years, like, and this is already happening, when the number of vendors increase, it really becomes very difficult to you know, have these software delivery pipelines established from vendors to end user CSPs and having feedback from end user CSPs back to vendors becomes a problem. Why that is because all these vendors, they are probably using different processes to deliver the software. They are probably using different technologies to deliver their software. Again, we can give some example, open source projects like Jenkins, Spinnaker, Argo, Tekton, CD ecosystem is flourishing as well, and that gives choice to users. But that also brings additional challenges, like there is no alignment, there is no harmonization, there is no standardization within the ecosystem. And this results in a lot of challenges for end users especially, because vendors could deal with end users. In this case, there is one end, end user and multiple vendors, and this might be simpler for you know, vendors to tackle with. But when it comes to end users, they need to interface multiple vendors. And how to bring those pipe pipelines in place is really challenging. And this has been the question we have been trying to find an answer for the last six, seven years. And that actually started us again reaching out to other projects and other communities. And Release Engineering gave us some head start in this under OPNFE. And then we established an initiative called Cross Community CI within OPNFE. And uh, you can see RPT, I think this is 2017 Open Source Summit Europe in Prague, where he was talking about what we are doing in OPNFE. And then in 2018, we actually got a lot of support from other communities. And we had a community meeting, practitioners, like continuous delivery practitioners workshop in Los Angeles, co located with Open Networking Summit there in 2018. And in that photo, you see there are eight communities because everyone understood this is a problem we need to work together to solve. And that actually increased the awareness within the continuous integration, continuous delivery projects as well. Because if you think networking projects, for networking projects, the networking is their priority. So continuous integration and continuous delivery doesn't get the attention it needs. And this actually helped us to, you know, get the topic in front of CICD communities and start working with end users from different industries together. And that's why I said when I started, like, CD evolution started within LF networking. Again, other communities were doing things similar to things we were doing, but we actually scaled that effort and brought more people into conversation. And yeah, that brings us to actual topic, interoperability in CD. Thank you, Fatih. Yeah, so after all this history, um, we have the Continuous Delivery Foundation. And one of the topics that we really care about there is interoperability within the ecosystem. Um, so we started, there was a, a group formed within the Continuous Delivery Foundation where we started discussing about interoperability, a special interest group. And out of that, um, we created also actually projects and we are going to talk about uh, uh, this project today um, to uh, tackle this problem of interoperability. So um, switching gears a bit, going uh, deeper into the CI CD space, um, so this could be like your typical uh, simple version of a CD pipeline. 
Um, so you start typically where software, which is stored in some configuration management system. And nowadays, um, it's very uh, common to have software in Git, but there is still like software uh, which is stored in SVN or other systems. And beside the uh, Git or SVN, the way that developers uh, interact and develop the, the software is through platforms that are built around those. So like your GitLab or GitHub or Bitbucket or Garrett or what's more. So these can already be different uh, with different software coming from different vendors. And then you have all your different uh, type of testing, static analysis, building, and building, uh, especially testing and building can be very specific to the programming language that is used uh, by the community uh, that is developing uh, software. Test frameworks, uh, deployment, there is deployment twice because we are deploying to staging and to production then. And even after production, there is uh, observe and monitor which is still part of the entire uh, pipeline, right? And all these different steps and tools, they, they produce output. So it could be like uh, from the testing parts, the test results, they can go in the database. You can have an artifact repositories with all the software packages are stored, log servers and other kind of artifacts. And also it's typically um, very useful to have visualization tools to visualize the entire uh, workflow. Um, but this structure of pipelines bring um, different concerns, as I was mentioning, um, because you may have different tools involved from different vendors. So um, it becomes um, complex to maintain and integrate all the different tools together. I mean, even within a, a single pipeline, you have to integrate some of the tools uh, together and you, to be able to provide something like, uh, for instance, the dashboard or common place where all the artifacts are stored. And so that's, that's uh, one concern. Another concern is that these different tools that are involved in the pipeline, internally, um, they have their own different and opinionated data models. So when you go and collect data from all the different tools, you might be presented data uh, with different structure. Some tools may expose some part of the data and others may not. And so when you go and bring them all together, you may actually end up losing some of the critical bits of information because you have to adapt all this uh, data to common format. So um, this um, also affects, uh, may affect the scalability. And one of the uh, uh, way you can see the scalability impact is also in terms of organization. So if you have different pipelines for different software components within an organization and they use different tool set or different pipelines, it will be harder to have this brought at the organization level, right? Because you have, again, different data formats, different interfaces. So it's uh, harder to scale up to the entire organization. And finally, lock-in effects. So if you're starting working with a certain tool and you want to switch to another one, but you implemented a number of integration already, so changing this tool to another tool, it, will, it means that uh, you will have to re-implement all these different interfaces because the interfaces are not standardized. And so I wanted to uh, look at integration versus interoperability. Right, so in the, what uh, I talked about until now was like all the integration effort, all the engineering effort that has to go into integrating the different tools and making them work together, adapting the data models and so forth. But that means that then organization doing that, they have to bear the, the maintenance cost for these all these bits of integration that they're doing, right? And so replacing one of the components can be very costly. Um, well, if we switch to interoperability, in the interoperability world, the different tools, they have uh, more consistent data models, they have a common API that can be used to interact with each other, right? So it makes it much easier to replace one tool uh, with another tool or to make a number of tools working together. And so, um, this is the vision that we have of interoperability. And for that, we created a project that uh, it's called CD events for continuous delivery events. 
and CD events is a specification. It's a specification for continuous delivery events. And as I mentioned earlier, the project was uh, born out of our, the work that we are doing in the Continuous Delivery Foundation to bring interoperability into the CD space. Right, so uh, just to give you an overview of what CD events look like. So uh, we have mission uh, that uh, serves different areas. So interoperability is the main goal. So the ability for different tools uh, to talk through similar interfaces. So let's see if this works. Uh, sorry, did the wrong thing. Yeah. So starting from the software configuration management for build, so forth. So all the tools can, if they generate events, they send signals about what they're doing. This can be used to, to trigger the tools and to have them talk to each other. And they can do that through a standard interface, which is what we specify in CD events. The second use case um, is observability and matrix and visualization. So once you have all the, diff all the different tools in your tool chain generating events about what they're doing, saying, okay, I started this activity, I completed this activity, and this is, these are the details in there. So you, what you can do, you can collect all this in a single uh, evidence store. And what this allows you to do is then have all the data in a consistent format in one place coming from the different tools. And then through this data, you can build and end-to-end -end views, so you can have build a dashboard where you can see the entire workflow happening, you can calculate metrics, you can generate notifications out of it, and so forth. And another important use case that you can um, look at through this evidence store is actually the supply chain security, because the fact that you're collecting all this data allows you to, to go and dig into the data and track where a certain artifact came from, and or if you have a certain deployment happening or if you have a certain incident happening in production, you can then trace back um, all the things that happened in your uh, tool chain that led to that point. A bit more details about the CD event specification. Uh, so it's organized in different group of events uh, that correspond to different parts of the typical CI-CD pipeline. So we have events related to the orchestration uh, for tools like Jenkins or Tecton the, about pipeline starting, task uh, starting, ending, and so forth. Uh, we have software configuration management uh, events. If you think about the, the web books uh, that you get typically from your GitLab and GitHub, so this attempt to standardize the format used for those so that you can, um, if you have all the different tools emitting, emitting this uh, same type of event, you can just do uh, integrate them once. We have continuous integration events, those are about builds and artifacts, and these are uh, especially important when you want to track uh, artifact or you want to apply policy, for instance, about an artifact being signed, about having things like is a provenance available for this artifact, what, are, what is the S bond for that artifact, so we are building this kind of features into these events. Testing events, um, also they can be used to uh, have a look at what, uh, what all the tests that have been executed on the software are, and you can use them as well to enforce policies, for instance, if you want to make sure that your software has been scanned for vulnerabilities at certain security tests or integration tests that have been executed before bringing into staging or production, you can do this for this data. And finally, we have continuous deployment and continuous operation events. And that's, that's more about the deployment and operation uh, part of the pipeline. Um, apart from that, in CD events, we also define how this uh, data is transported. So uh, we rely on a standard project as part of a CNCF it's called Cloud Events. And the advantage of uh, Cloud Event is that it provides binding for a number of different transport uh, underneath. So you can transport cloud events on top of HTTP, but also things like MQTT, Kafka, NATS, Webhooks, and more. Okay. So apart from the specification in CD events, we also provide uh, SDKs. So today we have Golang, Java, and Python. 
and we have a few adopter projects. So there is a plugin available for Jenkins, and we are working on implementation for Spinnaker. Um, Tecton has an experimental implementation. Test, test Cube, a testing framework, also implemented CD events, adopted CD events. And we are working with the Harbor, Harbor and Argo communities. Uh, so they have an RFC app for uh, integrating CD events. And we have contribution and support from many companies. I won't read through the, through the list there, but um, our community keeps growing. Um, and in terms of future, uh, of course, we are working, well, continue development, and we, uh, we plan to uh, develop more SDKs, as those are really important to integrate with different tools that are written in different languages. Uh, so the next app that we have planned for are .NET and JavaScript. And also we are starting to focus a lot on uh, supply chain security. Uh, type of uh, use cases. I mentioned that earlier, so we have some uh, events uh, related to that, but we want to enrich the data model to account for more information in, in that area, like um, S bombs and provenance data and so forth. Further to that, uh, we are working from an architecture point of view, also within the Continuous Delivery Foundation. We have an initiative uh, about creating a reference architecture so we are collaborating between the CD events project and the CDF uh, to build that architecture. Um, the idea is we want to make it easier for project adopting uh, CD events to, to give a view of uh, what is the intention, how these events can be used, uh, and how they can be implemented in the different tools and then used together uh, across the different tools. Um, yeah, we also have, um, we're not working just with the CDF, we are work collaborating with a number of different um, communities. So we have been uh, discussing with the CNCF, the tag app delivery. They're also very interested in standardization in this area. Uh, so we, we hope to collaborate uh, with them further in the future. So um, we have an effort ongoing also collaborating with the Open Telemetry project because they're also um, very interested, of course, in the mission of monitoring and collecting data, and they were thinking about standardizing how you transport data specifically for this uh, CI/CD use cases over open telemetry. So we are starting a collaboration with them to see uh, how we can achieve the uh, same goal together. We are also um, interested in discussion with the Open Mainframe project. They are also interested in this kind of. Uh, work in consolidating and with the uh, value stream management consortium and um, they work with uh, tools that allows you to define features that you may want to have in your software up to the, 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 the time where they get in front of users and so they're interested in, in tracking all the data uh, what how long it takes for a feature to be defined and then implemented and what is the value it brings to users and so they have a good amount of overlap with what we do in, uh, on the CD event side. So further to that, uh, we will continue working with uh, more and more uh, communities. As I, mentioned, as I mentioned, we are working with Argo and Flux communities. We reached out to the Flux uh, colleagues as well. So we're trying to get CD events uh, known as adopted by as many communities as possible to bring more value to, to our uh, users. The next step, of course, uh, once we reach uh, enough adoption, and we started these conversations already, uh, would be to have CD events supported by different vendors um, in this area, so companies selling services in the CD uh, space supporting that. And we have um, our first end users as well for CD events, and we are been collaborating with the Continuous Delivery Foundations to publish uh, end user stories, which are very interested, interesting uh, if you want to learn more about how companies are investing and adopting city events uh, to streamline um, their uh, CI CD uh, platforms internally. You can find this uh, on the CD uh, Foundation website. And yeah, how to join. Um, 
So we have cityevents.dev website. And so there you can find uh, links to the specification and the community. So you uh, can find links to our um, chat channel, to our mailing list, and to the, all the meetings and the working group that we host if you want to, to connect to us. Um, and especially uh, we have a Slack that is hosted by the Continuous Delivery Foundation where a lot of the conversation happens. So please uh, join, on, join us on the Slack. And if you have questions or you want to contribute, feel free to reach out to us there. And I think, yeah, that's all we had for today. Um, yeah, I think we are a bit early, but we have some time for questions, if you have any, and um, thank you. Any questions here in the room? Okay, I'm not seeing any on the virtual platform as well. Um, so we've got a few minutes before our next presentation. Um, so if you all just feel free to take a quick break and we'll commence back here at uh, one, uh, I'm sorry, 2.20. Yeah, just one last thing. As I said, like this work originated from LF networking from Telco. Well, unfortunately we don't have we don't see many, you know, people joining to this effort on CDF side. Lots of other companies and industries like this, I think this Andrea Sean is like, we have lots of contributors and there are even more contributors we don't know about. But it's really important for uh, telco or networking industry to actually take part in these conversations. And I see some, especially CSPs doing really cool stuff with GitOps and so on. But those things are like local fixes, like those things don't actually address the interoperability issue. In that, that issue will still be there if people adopt GitOps and use Flux or Argo or whatever. But in that, those pipelines will need to interface with other pipelines, both within CSPs and you know, towards vendors. And that is the key thing. I think it is important if we can bring some you know, contributors from networking communities, then we can have, you know, broader conversations and networking use cases could perhaps be addressed under this effort as well. And we can hopefully standardize within the CD ecosystem, these, you know, CD events based data model and so on. So please join. Quick question. Um, so you were talking about potentially bringing in <coughs> networking use cases here. Do you see a potential for ever working with the 5G Super Blueprint? Exactly. I, I think we, I, I don't remember who I talked to. It might be your Heather or my, probably Heather, Heather Kirksky. Because like 5G Blueprint, it has some CICD stuff in it as well, not very visible. But again, we can experiment with these use cases directly under that 5G Blueprint as well. Like demonstrating like how multiple vendors could interact with it's, target CSP, for example, which the 5G blueprint could be the CSP in the end. So I think like, again, since I worked in telco industry for 16 years, my worry is like, we will continue working on these topics and community will continue moving forward. And since the project is very young, it is easier to bring in your use cases there and get them part of the specification. If it takes for time, for a while for networking industry to start engaging, things might become a bit more difficult because the specification will be stabilized, 1.0 release will be made, and it might take longer to get those things addressed within the you know, CD1 specification and 5G blueprint could be something we can you know, talk and see how we can have some kind of demo to start with, how this could help 5G blueprint, for example. Uh, we'll take a quick break. Um, thanks, everyone.